this subject is very uh, close to my heart um, because of the fact that uh, my office is more often than not called upon, <clears throat> especially by the international media, to respond to questions that appertain to our positions on various matters. And they may range from our actions like uh, what is Kenya doing with the, the Kenyan, uh, about the citizens in Lebanon who need to be, uh, to be evacuated? What is the situation there? It could as well be just a local issue. Uh, for example, uh, the other day somebody was asking me the finishing of projects uh, for stadium by Deutsche Welle. And like very, 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 very astounding uh, to say this, uh, Dr. Coril, because we've, we've had conversations with you on the same prime CS, uh, even sometimes back when we were dealing with the issue of the Congo uh, and the elections there, and many other issues that arise from day to day uh, appertaining to the Kenyan position. Now, truth be told, is that Kenya has done very well, really, uh, in matters of international diplomacy in recent times under His Excellency President William Ruto. The profile is very high, and the Prime CS has been in the forefront in uh, you know, putting the position very well. And I, I think more often than not, Kenya has been called upon to provide leadership um, uh, in many, many instances. I remember when we had the 60th anniversary of the African Development Bank, the president put it very clearly that uh, he spends about 60% of his time uh, dealing with uh, African matters and 40% on Kenya because if he doesn't uh, sort out Africa, he will then not be able to sort out Kenya. And you know very well he is a, the champion for reforms at the AU. Uh, but I think it, it is basic um, expectation that any nation looks out for its interests uh, that then would ensure that we procure the best of benefits uh, to, uh, to, to, to its citizenry. So I think that is it, um, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, I, I really uh, want to urge us to uh, look at the benefits that uh, come to us as a country, be it matters to do, for example, uh, with, the, with, the, with the export of our labor so that we have more income coming to our country. I think it's almost like number one income honor for foreign exchange, be it to do with how we can promote our sports, you know, uh, you know, because of the way we are known as good Maradonas, you know, that kind of thing. And whatever other imagined, you know, ways in which Kenya's, you know, flag can be, can, can, can fly high. I, I would want to imagine uh, going forward that even when you look at the substance of the source document that is a foreign policy, the most important ingredient about it is to espouse it in such a manner that it is automatic. Like we make it, uh, we encapsulate it uh, in the best way. And I think it's about economic diplomacy. You know, it's about ensuring that uh, we, we get uh, uh, you know, the best out of the markets out there. And also providing that African voice that many a times is, is seen to be fragmented. And, and, and I'm really championing for that. But we cannot proceed as a country uh, having such kind of uh, you know, standing if then there is backroom noise. You know. The media plays an essential role in shaping narratives, encouraging dialogue on topical issues, and holding political leaders and decision makers to account. Your importance in agenda setting and influencing national and global insights is well recognized. This is more profoundly evident in the international relations of our time, which is marked by a rapidly shifting geopolitical landscape and persistent transboundary concerns, including climate change, cybersecurity, global pandemics, human rights, economic instability, and mutating threats to peace and security. In short, media diplomacy continues to play a critical role in responding to mega trends, including globalization, regional integration, and global governance. 
still looking at the high vol voltage concentrations of media experts and professionals in this room, several rhetorical questions ran through my mind. For instance, what opportunities and risks arise from the globalization of digital communication and journalism? What options exist for states to engage media for positive outcomes in this era of misinformation, disinformation, and weaponization of communication technology? How can we balance between freedom of the press and national security obligations? In this era of breaking news, 24-hour news cycles, social media, and instant global communication, how the media reports on global affairs not only informs but also influences policy, public opinion, and international relations. So it will be important to interrogate how you want us to collaborate better in projecting our country's national interests and positioning Kenya in the global arena. Therefore, I encourage you to come up with a written submission that can be incorporated into the 2024 foreign policy document and the sessional paper to be tabled in Parliament. Let me conclude by urging you to use this forum to candidly share your insights, experiences, and challenges in order to help us shape the trajectory of the revised foreign policy for the good of our nation. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the purpose of this round table, and it is my pleasure to declare it officially open. Uh, why we are going through this, and we intend to engage uh, different constituencies, including even uh, the, the, the faith-based uh, stakeholders in our community, to have a conversation uh, around this same subject. We want to be as broad and open as uh, as we can as we can be. Um, and this was really provoked uh, when. In, the, in June, when the young people in Kenya were raising concerns, they kept on asking one fundamental question. Why does the president travel? Why does he travel? What is he going to do? What is he need for Kenya? So, I think this is a great opportunity for us to really figure out. And have we been communicating well? Are we a shy Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Have we been running away from you? Uh, tell us the truth. Speak to it. Uh, help us become better uh, in the interest of, of, of Kenya. So this is our humble request to you this morning. Uh, and uh, after you've had the deliberations, we look forward to a document that can help us um, integrate your views, your suggestions into this, this uh, into Kenya's foreign policy. The most important thing that uh, that makes us gather here is about the, the role of the media in uh, shaping up our foreign policy. There are so many dynamics involved in in the crafting of foreign policy especially from the 20th century going into the 21st century, foreign policy now is being shaped by a lot of non-state actors. And these non-state actors are, are, are people who do things they do not have to, to pay allegiance to any government. They could be business people. They could also be uh, sports people, very, very influential people in society who transact a lot of business between themselves and the people of other, other nationalities without any reference to government. These people are very influential. They have money, they have, they have resources, they, they, they also have knowledge and skills. And if you ignore them, 
they are likely to, to, to cause you problems as government. We know very well that the state as, as, as crafted uh, in the modern era does not have capacity to provide all the services that uh, people need. And that's why the state also needs private citizens, private people to support it. So the people who come in as private en uh, enterprises do not have to beg government, but they come in with some agenda. And so when you are crafting foreign policy, you have also to think about the role these people will play. One group that is very, very influential in this is the media. The media play a big role. We have private media, we have government media, but across the world, private media is increasingly uh, 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 gaining influence in the crafting of foreign policy. So that's why in our country we recognize the role of the media, not from the government perspective, from, but the general perspective that we need media to also help us. Help us just like other countries also need media to help to pursue and even support government policy with regard to the crafting of foreign policy. This is very critical. So in our case here, the role of the media cannot be overemphasized. Media is critical. We need the media to talk about our bottom-up thinking. The, the foreign policy of Kenya has recently shifted, shifted a great deal towards economic diplomacy. And we're doing economic diplomacy deliberately because the government agenda is based on that. We want to do something about housing, and, uh, and, uh, and housing is uh, affordable housing, uh, which is within the realm of housing and settlement. We want to do something about MSMEs. We want to do something about universal health care. We want to do something about, uh, about uh, agriculture and food security, information superhighway. As we do this, we need media to, to provide proper critical coverage, not just negative coverage that sometimes we witness, but coverage which helps the government, uh, you know, advertise its agenda so that the public can understand what government is doing ab about us. Your Excellency, we are gathered here this morning to engage with our media or the leadership of our media with regard to uh, matters foreign policy. As you know, Your Excellency, Kenya adopted a foreign policy about 12 years ago, the very, the very first foreign policy since independence. Uh, that foreign policy propounded in fairly broad terms um, our foreign policy doctrine and the broad direction that we should pursue. But 12 years is a long time. And the world has understood that the time has since shifted quite significantly, uh, necessitating, uh, through your leadership, uh, the need to review that foreign policy. Um, and, and so, Your Excellency, through your leadership, uh, we have been engaged in a process of seeking to review it. And as part of that process, uh, we have held consultations with uh, major stakeholder groups uh, and today we are really lucky to hold this consultation with the media. And the question then is why the media? Um, I think it's not, um, it's, it's rather obvious that the media plays an extremely important role uh, as that you know the main source of information they inform the public uh, they influence uh, public perceptions um, and therefore they they shape uh, our understanding of the world through their reports uh, through their publications through their engagements and, and we thought your excellency that it was very important uh, not just to look at the media on the tail end of the process, sort of as part of policy implementation, but to begin to incorporate their thinking at inception, at the point where we are actually developing the building blocks of this policy. 
because we'd like a situation in our ideal world, we'd like a situation where we are able to, um, we are able to read more.